As the COVID-19 pandemic rages on in most parts of the world, how are Agilists finding meaning and purpose in these troubled times? How can we connect, inspire, and support each other? In days gone by, Caravan's Rise provided rest, recovery, and community for travelers along the ancient Silk Road. Similarly, we hope that our Agile Caravan Sarai episodes will provide rest, inspiration, and hope. We hope each episode will remind us of our shared Agile values and thus bring us closer together. In past episodes, we've heard from Agile Manifesto authors like Jim Highsmith, Kent Beck, and Alistair Coburn. We've connected with captains of industry like Michael Carroll from Nationwide Insurance. We've also heard from global Agile titans, including Rashina Hoda, and Evan Leyburn from Australia, and Naresh Jain from India. As we begin to see the glimmers of hope for the end of the pandemic, Agilists continue to respond with resilience. This is a time for transformation. I invite you to join me as we continue our journey together. I'm Sanjeev Augustine, and this is Agile Caravan Sarai. Laurie Williams is a distinguished professor in the Computer Science Department of the College of Engineering at North Carolina State University, or NCSU. Laurie's research focuses on software security, agile software development practices and processes, in particular continuous deployment, as well as software reliability, software testing, and analysis. Over the last 21 plus years, Laurie has served NCSU at all levels of professorship, including associate and interim department head. Laurie also leads the Software Engineering Real Search Research Group at NCSU. Alongside her students, Laurie has been working collaboratively with high-tech organizations like Cisco, IBM Corporation, Microsoft, Red Hat, and more. Laurie was one of the founders of the very first Agile conferences, XP Universe, way back in 2001, which has since grown into the annual Agile conference. She is also the lead author of the book, Pair Programming Illuminated, and co-editor of the publication Extreme Programming Perspectives, Laurie Williams. So let's jump into our conversation today. It is 20 years since the uh, manifesto was signed, actually over 20 years, February of this past mm -hmm. year, so uh, February 2001, the Agile Manifesto. So what are your observations on the last 20 years of Agile? Yeah, two decades. Amazing how that happens. Um, you know, I, I look at the movement and think it's just an incredible success. Um, and, you know, I, I think that a lot of the success is because in the early days, and I did, I w was lucky enough to be involved with this movement all the way back pre-manifesto. So, you know, I got my PhD in 2000. And so I was doing research in Agile, like starting in 1998. So even more than 20 years ago. And, you know, what I saw at the time is that rather than there to be competition among the Agile Manifesto authors, there was, there was total cooperation and collaboration. Um, you know, I work with a lot of government agencies and Agile's the standard, you know, DevOps and DevSecOps. I do a lot of work in security. You know, even among the government, even among critical technologies, you know, it's the standard. It's pretty heartening to see that some government agencies are actually ahead of their private sector counterparts. So it's you know, yeah. Washington, D.C. area, and we see that firsthand. Yeah, yeah, it, it is heartening, as you say. I like your word. Um, you know, when I look at for documents and standards, as I teach and work with companies, a lot of times, you know, they're DOD documents or whatnot. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, the Digital Services Playbook is one awesome document that folks should check out, right? Okay, I'll check that one out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So a second question for you. It's uh, the last couple of years have been hard for everybody. So how have you been doing personally in the pandemic? Yeah, do, doing fine. I had to make an adjustment as an, an educator. We immediately, you know, I'll never forget being on spring break in 2020 and on Tuesday of spring break, when I was in Key West, all of a sudden, bam, we're not going back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, and, you know, we had to, you know, completely pivot and we just went back for, you know, in January or in August. So like, you know, it, it took a while for us to, to get back. No, actually, no, in January, we went back in person in the fall. We were not. So that was different, um, you know, 
and I was a traveler. Like I was always going to academic conferences throughout the world and working with companies, doing consulting. Um, so, you know, I have to say now, when I think about all the traveling I did, it was probably too much. <laughs> um, but, you know, I have lots of friends around the world and you and I wouldn't have met if it wasn't for conferences. Yeah. And uh, so like, I, I miss that, but I do feel like, you know, being a, probably a little more, I think the four weeks leading up, like, and I was in Q West when we found out that like the NBA, it was like Monday, the NBA is shutting down Tuesday, the whatever shutting down, you know, like, and I'm sitting there in Q West, like what? The whole world is shutting down and I'm sitting in QS. I can't even go home and buy toilet paper yet. <laughs> but, um, yeah. you know, but I do think that probably going forward, you know, being a little bit more moderate, but, you know, I miss seeing people in person and, and meeting new people. I miss that. Um, yeah. You've done something about that when you and I were chatting earlier and you talked about that uh, academic vibrancy course. I thought that's such a neat idea. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So what I was saying is, you know, what I was detecting was with students with uh, with COVID and everyone being at home was really, you know, more depression, less motivation. And so um, I just one day just thought I need to help people get through this. And so fortunately, being a professor, I can like stage, a, you know, a a forum. And so I, I proposed a one credit class, which I call academic vibrancy. And it was, you know, the different weeks were on, you know, the power of community, on meditation, on exercise, nutrition, sleep, goal setting, um, morning routine, evening routine, you know, just really so that people can have balance in their bodies on minds, you know, not just focusing and, and really, you know, what I was saying is if you're an athlete, then you, you know, you're all about your body and, and getting your body and mindset together to be, um, perform as best possible. And those of us in the knowledge economy, as well as academics, like, you know, it's about our brain. So we have to treat everything so that we maximize our brain power um, which is not just like it's it's body mind soul it's everything it's a holistic picture of balance and so that's really what the course was about bringing all of it together that's wonderful and i think that's a great model so uh, last question so what are some of your thoughts and um advice and words of uh, inspiration for um all of your fans out there <laughs> who, who want to know more about what you're doing because you're, you have this unique perspective coming from academia but yet so having this over huge overlap with the uh, with industry as well yeah so i guess you know my advice is you know back to the academic vibrancy is really to think holistically about your person um you know bringing you know body mind and soul together so that you can have the best life possible and to make the most contribution as possible so there's that but i have to put a plug in for security and i spend most of my days now um, bringing security into the software development life cycle and devsecops types of things and um, there was so um, Alex Stamos i don't know if you know that name he was the CISO of my Facebook and uh, I don't know, at least other other companies as well. And he he um, at the end of a closing keynote when we went to, in person, um, the Usenix conference, he said something that applies not just to security people, but to all of us. He said, you know, the, the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. He changed it to the geeks shall inherit the earth. And then he said, we got to do better. Yeah, and yeah. so really all of us, like if you think about the world, we are the people who control every aspect of everything. Everything has software in it these days. So and then the we got to do better part of it, like the world is counting on us. And so whatever you do, thinking about how the world counts on us and, you know, my cybersecurity perspective is every day you read in the newspaper about some, you know, ransomware attack, this and that. Um, and it affects citizens in all aspects. And so, you know, trying, I, I know with a lot of agile conferences, um, you know, you talk about security and two people show up. 
1,600 <laughs> people at the conference and two people show up. And so, you know, broadening your perspective and trying to bring in the second DevSecOps, I guess is, is how I would leave it. Well, thank you for that uh, very inspirational message. And thank you for joining me here today and uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you.